Lisa Kaufman is a geriatric care manager. For over 20 years, she's been helping families in the Atlanta, Georgia area through her practice senior care options. In addition, Lisa was recently elected to the board of directors for the Aging Life Care Association. Lisa will talk to us today about what it's like working with a, a geriatric care manager. And hopefully by the end of the video, you'll have a better understanding of how a geriatric care manager could help your family. Uh, if you'd like to reach Lisa directly, I'll have her contact information. I'll also make sure I include the website information for the Aging Life Care Association so you can do a search for an aging life care professional in your area. I'm here today with uh, Lisa Kaufman. Uh, Lisa is a certified professional aging life care manager. Did I get all that right? It's kind of a yep. mouthful. Sounds good. It okay. is. Okay. And uh, we'll have an opportunity to explore what all that means because that is a, a formal res designation that you have received. Uh, yep. But you also have a practice. Senior care options is mm -hmm. a practice that you own and operate out of Atlanta. Georgia, and you have a handful Correct. of people who also work with you to Correct. make the business run. So the yep. business is, if I can give it a generic term, it's mm -hmm. geriatric care management. Is that correct? The right yes. way to explain it? Okay. Um, a geriatric care manager is a, a healthcare professional. You do want to look for somebody who's got um credentials the education the field experience so that they know what they're doing um so a healthcare professional who helps work directly for the client the senior and their family to evaluate what their needs are develop a care plan and help them with the action items about what things need to be put into place to cut down on costly time errors, um, medical errors, um, financial errors. I mean, there are things that if you don't know what you're doing and you delve into this, if you've never cared for a loved one before, and this is your first time doing this, you're not gonna get it right the first go. There, it's very complicated. So you want to have someone as your aging and healthcare advisor, just like you have a legal advisor, a financial advisor, you want somebody whose wheelhouse is, is medical or healthcare and aging specifically. So they can help you make these decisions for your loved one as you go forward. So you, you said if you're doing this for the first time, you're likely to make mistakes. That's a little concerning because so many family members want to be in the position of, of, of caring for mom and dad. Yeah. But if you but, don't know what you, you don't know what you don't know, right. There's going to be some problems that you will arise. I, I don't want to say, oh yeah, this is a piece of cake. And it's not that I'm trying to sell what we do. It's just that it is complicated. And if you don't speak medical um, and the, the, you know, interacting with the physicians and other providers, is something you're not comfortable with or you don't have the experience or education, you're already at a disadvantage. So it's just nice to have somebody in your corner who works for you to make sure that your interests are being uh, recognized. Yeah, I, I am thinking about the personal experiences we had in our family with my mother and my father. And, you know, I'm, I'm blessed. I my siblings are great. They're all a uh, handful of them were involved with taking care of mom and dad. I, I wasn't in the same state. So mm -hmm. luckily I did have brothers and, and a sister. And I had a sister who's a lifelong, she's been in the medical field. She's a nurse. She's a lifelong nurse. So she could Perfect. write interference on a lot of things. Exactly. But, but even then the advantages that we had, mm -hmm. I realized that, okay, I wonder if there's some things that we could have done differently that would have had better outcomes you know? mm -hmm. and I, I don't know because like you said if you're doing this for the first time you might mis make mistakes but you don't know what you don't know that's right okay. so hopefully it's not anything that's critical or urgent or or life-threatening in any way um but it is nice to have somebody who knows the system who understands healthcare, who understands geriatrics to again kind of be in your quarter uh, your corner um, quarterbacking 
all the various providers. So I think one of the things that's really important about what geriatric care management or aging life care management can do is to be that hub of communication for all of the providers. I think that there's, um, there's a lack of continuity. I know that we want it to, to not be there. We, you know, with, with HIPAA, um, with the changing rules in healthcare about permissions to communicate and getting records to people, it's become much more complicated than it used to be, even though that wasn't the intention at all. Um, and frankly, a lot of the providers do not have the time to make phone calls to every family member to talk about whatever they saw at the last appointment. Um, what I typically see if somebody is perhaps in an assisted living is that the assisted living looks to the family to make decisions and do some things like doctor's appointments and um, that they are very involved in the care of that resident. Um, the family thinks the assisted living is doing all this stuff. The family thinks the doctor knows what everybody is doing. The doctor doesn't know what everybody is doing and neither does the assisted living and neither is the family. So everybody looks to the other players to be running what's going on and to know what everyone is doing, yet nobody steps up to that position. That's what a care manager does. They manage the care for this older person, understanding how aging looks and works so that we know what the different specialists are doing because they don't have time to call the primary care doctor. He or she is not doing that. Uh, they can call the physical therapy um, department, whoever's, if, they, if your loved one's getting physical therapy or occupational therapy or speech or whatever, the doctor's not following up to find out how things are going. That's not how it works. And suppose they need another round of PT, you can be recertified with the right documentation. Well, the doctor just doesn't automatically do that. You have to ask for it, but families don't know what they can ask for. And the communication is broken down. It does not occur the way we have these uh, expectations for how it's gonna operate and who is responsible for what pieces it's not really discussed, so it's an it's a unwritten series of expectations, and then things just fall through the cracks. So a geriatric care manager, aging life care manager, is the person who's going to follow up with PT so we know what's going on. Are the goals being met? Do we need to research again? Is there some you know, paperwork or a new script that you need from the physician? They will take care of it. They can report back to the physician if that's appropriate. They can report back to the assisted living. They definitely know, you know, let the family know what's going on. And that's just if PT is involved. So if there are a lot of specialists, there's the primary care. And back in the day, your GP, your internist, your primary care doctor, those are all interrelated terms. They really did have the time to know what everybody else was doing. And they were calling specialists. Well, those days are gone. Medicare doesn't pay for that. So they don't have time. So there's a, a breakdown in communication and the specialists focus on their specialty. So they may only be treating one system in the body, urology, nephrology, neurology, cardiology, who, any ology you want, they're not talking to each other. But people don't exist in a silo. And as we get older, there's an opportunity you know, that and probability that there's more than one system that's not working well. And if the specialists in the primary care are not communicating well, mistakes happen. A, a lot of people might think that this is, you know, someone staying overnight with people. That's not really what you do, right? Uh, Tell us no. what you don't do. And that would help us okay. think about what you, um, what you do. You did a great job of explaining what okay. you do. Thank you. But let's make sure we know where it cuts off. Absolutely. So um, some people think, and frankly, there's marketing issues with this. Part of why geriatric care managers rebranded at the National Professional Association level to aging life care professionals, aging life care managers, 
is because that horse was already out of the barn. We couldn't go back and trademark care management. There are um, some assisted livings across the country that refer to their caregivers, their CNAs, as care managers. Mm -hmm. Right. It's just marketing. These folks are not um, educated and credentialed in the same way. They probably went to um, a CNA school that at least in Atlanta is about 13 weeks. It is not a college degree. Critical thinking skills are not taught. This is hands-on personal care. It is very important, but it is not, and I don't want to offend anybody, but it's not skilled in the same way. Um, mm -hmm. When we're talking about aging life care managers, these are social workers, nurses, occupational therapists, speech therapists. My background is in therapeutic recreation. They can be gerontologists. Um, they can have degrees in psychology, you know, anything that's a higher science and they definitely have college degrees. Um, the National Association, um, ALCA, the Aging Life Care Association checks credentials and education. They want to make sure that people are qualified to practice. I do volunteer, I do a lot of things for them because I, I believe in the mission. And one of the things that I do is some career counseling on a voluntary basis. So when people call up and they're wondering, how do I become a care manager? I'm happy to be one of the coaches to help them. But I have folks who um, are very loving children for their parents and they had a very positive caregiving experience and they wanna do that for other people, which is delightful, but their background might be teaching or marketing or whatever. They don't have any experience. And just because their loved one had dementia does not mean that they are trained in dementia. They took care of one person with dementia. It is not a cookie cutter experience. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of education, continuing education, field experience, um, life experience, um, specialized trainings. It, it, there's a lot that goes into it. So when I talk to folks who have um, the appropriate skill set and background, then by all means, I, I want to steer them down this path. We do need more care managers. But there are folks that this is a brand new career nowhere near what they learned to do in school. And then I tell them, in order for you to become at a high enough level to make this even worth doing, you'd have to go back to school. And then they say, well, I'm almost retired. I don't want to do this. Then this is not what you should be doing. I'm mm -hmm. glad that you had a positive experience. That is a wonderful thing. You're a wonderful child to your parent, but that doesn't mean you can tell other people how to take care of their parents. That's dangerous. Right. Right. And, ju and just to repeat, and you did say this, but I wanted to re I I did repeat it also that, <laughs> you know, there, there are so many people who provide care for the elderly. Mm -hmm. You are in no way making lightly of, of those, those other people who provide no. a different no. level of care. You were just distinguishing what's involved yes. with, with your organization right. and become a member of exactly. your organization. So we don't provide hands-on personal care. I'm not helping bathe. I'm not helping right. cook. I'm not doing medication administration. That is, falls under a whole different, that's yeah. you know, certified nursing aides, certified nursing assistants, med medical technologists, which um, they have just a little bit more training, usually in assisted living so that they can pass medications to, to residents. We do not do that. Um, we also are not a placement service. A lot of people get confused because we do make recommendations. We do give resources and referrals, but it's not financially driven. We work like many financial planners do where it's, it's pay for service. We do that to remain objective about what recommendations we make. I'm not selling anything. I'm not making a commission. You never have to wonder what my hidden agenda is. I don't have one. Placement services are free to families, which has its place because there are times when people just need to know where to put their loved one and they don't have a lot of extra money. And that's fine. Um, 
but they don't do an on-site evaluation normally. It's usually done over the phone and the um, coordinator may or may not have any clinical skills and that's a differentiator. Care managers have clinical skills. Some of these other providers really do not. Okay. You were talking about someone who might be attracted to participate as an aging life uh, care manager mm -hmm. based on their experience with their family members. Mm -hmm. So many of us have moved away from our family. If yeah. I was an only child, I don't know what I would have done with my parents being in St. Petersburg and yep. me being up here. I would have to make a choice. Do I stay here or do I uproot my family and, and move back there? So I can, I can see that engaging mm -hmm. someone like you mm -hmm. in the town with my parents would be such a, a, a relief. Oh, absolutely. There's somebody there who, who has the skill set, who has the time, training, and the skill set. Mm -hmm. to do what, what I can't do, but would love to do. Exactly, exactly. And even if you are close by, um, you may not know what to do. I also work with a lot of only children because they have no one else to bounce those ideas off of. Mm -hmm. So that really is um, a specific demographic we don't always think about. They can live close by or far away. It doesn't really matter. It is nice to have somebody boots on the ground who can go see their loved one, be their eyes and ears, report back, but also be able to guide that family member when we see something, we say something, and, um, and offer some guidance and recommendations of how to move forward. But can you also just quickly tell us about, uh, is it ALCA? Is that ALCA. right? ALCA. Yeah, Aging Life Care Association. It's nationwide. There's roughly 2,000 members across the nation. If you go to their website, which is very informative, it's aginglifecare.org. If you go there, you can find a care manager within 100 miles of wherever your loved one is, because we aren't always located where our you know, aging loved ones are located. So mm -hmm. it is nice to find somebody there who understands um, the state regulations for things or who the good providers are. I mean, you can look stuff up online, um, but it doesn't tell you if they're good. They may have a really terrible website, but they're very good providers, or they could have a really sleek marketing campaign, but they don't know what they're doing. So Having somebody locally who has no vested interest, who says, this is who we like to use because they do a stellar job, that's worth its weight in gold. And the peace of mind is, is significant. 